Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 7th of April. India posts record COVID-19 cases, 13-fold jump over two months. U.S. President Biden needs more time in Afghanistan, says White House. And Nepal begins inoculation drive with China-made vaccine despite concerns. And now for all the details. The number of new coronavirus cases in India on Wednesday hit a record daily high since the outbreak of the pandemic with 115,736 new cases. The country recorded a 13-fold increase in the infection cases in just over two months. India's second wave of coronavirus infections continued to swell as it reported a record of 115,736 new cases on Wednesday, a 13-fold increase in just over two months. The federal government has asked states to decide on local curbs to control the spread of the virus but has so far refused to impose any national lockdown after the last one in 2020 devastated its economy. The total number of cases since the first recorded infection in India just over a year ago now stands at 12.8 million, making it the third worst heat country after the United States and Brazil. This comes as India has so far administered 85 million doses, more than 90% of those the AstraZeneca shot made by the Serum Institute of India. The rest has come from Indian company Bharat Biotech that has developed a vaccine with a government research body. Both vaccines require two doses. More than 74 million people in India have received at least one dose. U.S. President Joe Biden wants to take time to make the right decision and it will be tough to meet the May 1 deadline for U.S. troop withdrawal from Afghanistan, the White House said on Tuesday. This comes as a U.N.-led conference on Afghanistan is expected to be held in Turkey this month. U.S. President Joe Biden wants to take the time to make the right decision on Afghanistan, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki informed on Tuesday. Addressing a press conference, Psaki said it will be tough to meet the May 1 deadline for full withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan for logistical reasons, and the Biden administration is consulting internally with the national security team and advisors and also with U.S. allies. It's also an important decision, one he needs to make in close consultation with our allies and also with our national security team uh, here in this administration, and we want to give him the time to do that. Under the U.S.-Taliban peace agreement signed on February 2020, all U.S. forces stationed in Afghanistan must leave the country by May 1. Media reports have suggested that the Biden administration has asked the Taliban to agree on the presence of the U.S. forces for another three or six months, over which the group is yet to announce its position. This also comes as a U.N.-led conference on Afghanistan is expected to be held in Turkey this month. In news from Pakistan, the IMF in its recent report has said inflation and unemployment will increase in Pakistan during the current fiscal year. Pakistan's already fragile economy had only just been moving towards stability when the pandemic struck and experts fear its economic fallout will considerably derail the recovery process. The International Monetary Fund or IMF in its latest report has said inflation and unemployment will increase in Pakistan during the current financial year. The International Money Lenders report on Pakistan's economy stated the country's growth rate is expected to be 1.5% this year, while the government has forecast its growth rate as 2.1%. The unemployment rate in Pakistan is predicted by the IMF report to increase by 1.5% during the current fiscal year. The IMF and the Imran Khan-led government's figures were also contradictory to one another, 
when it came to inflation. As per the report, the government has projected that the inflation rate to be at 6.5% during the current fiscal year, while the IMF projects it to be at 8.7%. Pakistan has been one of the countries worst affected by COVID-19, with the economic disruption caused by the pandemic affecting an already existing crisis. The latest IMF's report comes as PM Imran Khan has announced that his government will reach out to the money lending organization again, seeking a second relief package to curb the worsening financial and economic situation of Pakistan. More on news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan's recent comments on the causes of sexual violence and rape have drew sharp reactions from lawyers and rights groups who are now demanding apology from the Premier. Khan, in his latest remarks, blamed vulgarity for the rise of rape and sexual violence in Pakistan and spoke of religion and the concept of parda in Islam, a practice that involves the seclusion of women from public observation by means of concealing clothing. Lawyers, rights bodies including the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan or HRCP, while condemning the remarks of Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on the causes of sexual violence and rape have demanded apology. In a statement, the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan said it was appalled by Prime Minister Imran Khan's remarks linking the incidence of rape to obscenity. PM Imran Khan in his recent remark blamed vulgarity for the rise of rape and sexual violence in Pakistan. Khan also spoke of religion and the concept of parda in Islam, a practice that involves the seclusion of women from public observation by means of concealing clothing and by use of high-walled enclosures, screens and curtains within the home. He said parda is to remove temptation from society because not everyone has willpower. Official statistics in Pakistan have revealed that at least 11 rape incidents are reported in the country every day with over 22,000 cases reported to the police in last six years, local media reported. In news from Sri Lanka, a top Sri Lankan minister said on Tuesday that a radical cleric who is now under detention has been identified as the mastermind of the deadly 2019 Easter Sunday attacks. This comes as Catholic Church leaders over the past weekend warned protests over an inquiry report that failed to name the masterminds even two years after the incident. Sri Lanka's Minister of Public Security Sarat Virasekra said on Tuesday that a radical cleric who is now under detention has been identified as the mastermind of the deadly 2019 Easter Sunday attacks that killed more than 270 people. Nine suicide bombers belonging to local Islamist extremist group National Tawhid Jamaat linked to the Islamic State carried out coordinated blasts that tore through three churches and as many as three luxury hotels in Sri Lanka on the Easter Sunday in 2019. Veera Sekra told reporters cleric Nofar Molvi was the mastermind of the bombings and was assisted by another person identified as Hajjul Akbar. He said 32 suspects have been charged with murder and conspiracy to murder. The total number of suspects in the remand custody is 211, including the 32 who have been charged. This comes as Catholic Church leaders this past weekend demanded justice for the victims and warned to launch a protest campaign, expressing disappointment over the final report of a presidential commission of inquiry into the attacks that failed to name the masterminds even two years after the incident. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal on Wednesday began inoculating its citizens against coronavirus with China-made Verocell. This comes despite safety concerns regarding the COVID-19 vaccine as it is yet to receive the WHO approval. Serpentine cues stretched from a vaccine booth in the premises of Sukhraj Tropical and Infectious Disease Hospital in Kathmandu as Nepal began an inoculation drive with China-made COVID-19 vaccine Verocell on Wednesday. As per the Nepal's health ministry, the inoculation drive with the 800,000 doses of the China-donated vaccine will target those involved in operation of emergency services, 
traders working across the Sino-Nepal border and Nepali students studying in China or those who are preparing to pursue education with Chinese scholarship. This comes despite safety concerns regarding the Verocell which is yet to be approved by the World Health Organization due to limited availability of information about its tests. Uh, to be completely honest, I'm quite a bit nervous about it because you know we don't have really good feedbacks about it yet. So yeah, finger crossed. Well, I just want to go back to China, and as I've heard that like the students that take the Chinese vaccine, they are only able to go back. So I just want to take the vaccine. With first phase of vaccination drive already complete using India-made anti-COVID vaccine, Nepal is now waiting for delivery of another 1 million vaccines from Serum Institute of India, expected till mid of this month. As of Wednesday, the Himalayan nation reported 278,470 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with 3,036 deaths so far. More on news from Nepal. Authorities in Nepal have transferred a 10-year-old male man-eater tiger from the Bardia National Park to the Central Zoo in capital Kathmandu after it attacked and killed two people in recent weeks. The tiger, which now remains in an enclosure of Central Zoo, had attacked a 34-year-old employee working for the rhinoceros census at the Bardia National Park earlier this week. Over the past few weeks, authorities have darted and captured four tigers at the Bardia National Park, which is one of the well-known areas for tiger sighting and have been reporting incidents of attacks on humans. As per official data, a total number of 10 people have died due to attacks by tigers in recent years. Government officials said that the increased tiger population in Nepal could be one of the reasons behind the rise in tiger attacks on humans. It is believed to be one of the man-eater tiger uh, that is causing problem from past few months. Uh, it has recently attacked one of our uh, elephant uh, staff also and unfortunately he died. Uh, and on the same day uh, the tiger was caught. U.S. climate envoy John Kerry has commended India as a world leader in renewables as he held talks with government leaders in New Delhi aimed at cutting carbon emission faster to slow global warming. Kerry is leading efforts to get countries to step up commitments ahead of leaders' summit on climate later this month. U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Climate John Kerry praise India as a world leader in renewables as he began talks with government leaders in New Delhi on Tuesday, aimed at cutting carbon emissions faster to slow global warming. Kerry is leading efforts to get countries to step up commitments ahead of a summit of 40 leaders on April 22 to 23, called by the US President Joe Biden. Kerry said India was setting a very strong example for other nations on powering a growing economy with clean energy. That kind of urgency is exactly what we need to come for global climate change, he said. But I am particularly grateful that India is getting the job done on climate, pushing the curve. You are indisputably a world leader already in the deployment of renewable energy, and your leadership of the International Solar Alliance promises to advance clean energy across India and other dynamic growing economies around the world. John Kerry also met India's Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister Dharmendra Pradhan on Wednesday. India is the world's third biggest emitter behind the United States and China and is under pressure to commit itself to net zero emissions by 2050 in a line with pledges made by several other countries. India points to its target of generating 450 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030 five times its current capacity and two and a half times its Paris pledge. But officials in India argue against adopting tougher emission goals as it tries to bridge a development gap. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button